I would like to welcome <coughs> each and uh, every one of you uh, here this evening for this uh, retreat that we have here together. <coughs> and with this the uh, opening talk for the time that we have, I'd like to give some uh, general uh, uh, background to the teachings and the practices that we'll be embarking on endeavour to give some kind of uh, overview with regard uh, to the period and then when we come to uh, uh, finish we'll have a short meditation together and then people can off to the horizontal posture. So uh, let me speak a little. I was just thinking as I walked up the uh, corridor here that uh, it's just uh, six years ago, in fact, that we moved um, to the present uh, building. And uh, initially, with regard to uh, Guy House, <coughs> it was since the mid 1920s a uh, convent and a very full uh, convent. But then, with the decline of uh, interest in uh, ordination, the uh, numbers got fewer and fewer and in a building with more than uh, 50 bedrooms at the end there was just five or six uh, nuns here so they went to what they called a mother house in Windsor and those of you who are here for the first time may have and probably will walk around the garden and the most important part of the whole uh, uh, convent ground for the good sisters who are here is right behind us and we promised faithfully that we would take good care of the cemetery. So right behind this wall here there's some uh, uh, 35 uh, uh, graves in a rather simple way of just the name of the sister, Sister Mary or Sister Anne or whatever and uh, the, da the date of uh, so from uh, the departure of the, the Good Sisters, we are very fortunate and blessed to uh, be uh, here and of course this was uh, the chapel uh, initially and it underwent quite some degree of uh, transformation to be what it is. And I noticed that after six years the carpet is still quite clean, it's rather impressive. So, um, in the uh, flow of things with Gaia House as well, there's a full program of retreats that take place. And as some of you know who have been here, as well as other facilities before, will be generally familiar with uh, uh, insight meditation, which in a way is shorthand for meaning meditation for insight, to see things clearly. And sometimes, of course, that uh, does mean facing up to some of the hard truths of one's existence. And this has been a rather strong and persistent theme in the, in the Buddhist uh, tradition. And for some people, might even think it's just the only theme in the Buddhist tradition of looking at one's existence, looking into what's uh, going on, letting go of as much as possible and finding freedom uh, in spite of oneself. Finding freedom in spite of the uh, manifestations of I, me and my which tend to act like a bit of a curse on people's existence. So this thread and theme has run through the tradition for uh, two and a half thousand years so the current crop of uh, Dharma teachers, inside meditation teachers, mm. like, like myself and others come here, put their towels and generate it, of course, uh, uh, with much, uh, what we call it, enthusiasm. And during the uh, past year at Guy House, I had some opportunity to uh, engage in some personal uh, retreats. 
And it coincided, I may say, with um, uh, fulfilling a request from uh, uh, Rider Books, uh, books to uh, dig out the popular selling marketing point these days, to dig out one quote per day of the Buddha. Buddha's book of daily meditation. This is an indirect advertisement. And I um, spent some three months <coughs> reading through all the talks of, uh, of the Buddha. And there are, I may say, one hell of a lot. Something around, around about 5,000 of them. But the eye gets trained to, just to see what the good man said, and leave out all the entertainment that goes on around it. And in reading through, and having the privilege of selecting a quote per day, it occurred to me again and again, and again and again, the tremendous emphasis that the uh, Buddha gives on the cultivation and the exploration of calmness, happiness, joy, deep peace, inner peace and contentment in life. It's a, a pervasive theme which runs through. And in a very general way, if I may say, that in the insight meditation uh, tradition, which I am uh, more, uh, if you say, son of that tradition, the um, appropriate and invaluable emphasis has been that if we really look at ourselves, face up to some of the uh, dukkha, those of you who have never been in this kind of retreat before will have been blessed enough never to have heard this word, um, it, I, can't even, I can't even remember how to spell it, but it's probably something like D-U-K-H-A, and it means unsatisfactoriness, it means difficulty, it means problems, it means anguish, it means suffering, it means dealing with stuff. And the important theme and emphasis has, has been in looking into ourselves and using the resources of meditation to attend to all of that. And through attending to what goes on and seeing the changes and the impermanence of it and unsatisfactoriness of it. That we have a chance and a real opportunity to be much more clear about mind and body, states of mind, etc. This is a consistent theme in sight meditation. Out of that seeing clearly, naturally comes calmness. The more clear we are, the more at peace we are with what is. And so there has been a kind of um, interrelationship, one might say, between the great value of seeing clearly, called insight into oneself, as a significant contribution to calmness, inner peace and clarity with what is. <coughs> and this is called Vipassana tradition, insight meditation uh, tradition. So while um, uh, engaged in um, personal re re retreat here and quiet time, I began to record, as I would say, um, the years in which I was a Buddhist monk seems actually like uh, lifetimes uh, ago, but it's not quite. And that period of time not only included time in um, the monastery in Thailand for some years, but also the best part of the year um, in a cave. And so while sitting upstairs in the cave of a small uh, uh, room and considerably more comfortable, I r recollected um, the great value of meditation for calm, meditation for joy, meditation for contentment. And one of the important aspects and uh, themes uh, of this is that I think all too much in the uh, uh, Western world we tend to have a view rather mechanistic that solving problems in life is by going into them. This is a very 
popular viewpoint. And issues of life and the difficulties of life are somehow resolved and, and dissipated with through actually going into them, making them more conscious, bringing them to the surface, as the uh, psychotherapist friends will say, or the Batman teachers will say, etc. And it certainly is an, an invaluable and important uh, way. But sometimes in life, especially with the inner life and its movement in life, that lots of things can be resolved, in fact, by not giving them attention, by not making such a fuss about what's going on inwardly and highlighting it so that it's a kind of daily recycling thing which we tell ourselves. If I keep looking at it, I'll resolve it. There's no end to the naive confidence of the human species that if you keep looking at something, it's going to resolve it. Well, I know plenty of people, if I dare I say. Having been a Dharma teacher for God, another lifetime, 25 years or more now, and some of the dear Dharma wallers who come on the retreat, they are still looking at the same thing that they were looking at one year ago, five years ago, ten years ago, etc. So I think sometimes not looking might be just as helpful, this is slightly heretical in the tradition I have to say, but not looking might be rather helpful than to spend so much time looking at the dukkha, meaning looking at what's unsatisfactory. Not easy, this is a, a, something to be explored and to look into. And the access, rather important word here, the access to deeper inner, inner life is such that the deepest beauty of life and the most profound elements of the inner life is always deeper than the anger always deeper than the problem. Always deeper than the turmoil and conflict. That the true nature of the inner human being is genuinely pure, genuinely radiant, and genuinely happy. And though sometimes in our human foolishness we touch upon painful places in the inner life, we can then easily draw the conclusion, now I'm really going deep. I'm really touching the old wounds, the old hurts, the old problems, the old stuff, etc. And that's really deep down there. Believe me, you probably won't, but anyway, try. It ain't that deep. The deepest is bright. The deepest is pure. The deepest is clear. And that radiance of that is precious for life, precious for consciousness. And this, I say, as I say, sometimes in that, we tend to forget. And when we have forgotten in its strongest, we actually give and this is another terrible tragedy of the human condition we actually give greater reality to suffering than to anything else. We, we might even say to ourselves when we're really in the pain and the difficulty this is how I really feel Whoa, please, careful. We give authority to problem. And we think it's more real because of the way we invest 
and give it an extraordinary authority. So, in all of this, um, I'm going to, I'm trying to um, <coughs> um, make a, a, a shift in emphasis. So, this is the first, I've given rather a lot of meditation uh, 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 retreats. <coughs> Rather a lot is, uh, God, how many? Certainly at least week long, well, anything less than a week is a uh, small change, at least 500. So this particular retreat is um, um, mildly, for my standards anyway, um, experimental. So good luck. <laughs> now, normally with the retreat, I usually have uh, one or two uh, uh, good Dharma friends to assist assist me because of there. But I uh, was very um, hesitant hesitant after deciding uh, last year to give a retreat on absorption, deep calmness, jhanas as they're called in the Buddhist tradition. To ask uh, any uh, of uh, the assistant teachers or Dharma teachers, uh, etc. Because they may not be too confident nor quite sure basically what to do or what to say. <coughs> so that's why I'm, um, of course, God is on his own this evening, uh, etc. Excuse me, vernacular. And. Um, the other is also as well with regard to uh, the time and uh, uh, the, the retreat. It's not only going to require, I feel, um, a little bit of um, change from uh, the usual regime of running a retreat in terms of the timetable, but also some um, um, emphasis and a little bit more variety, which I think is actually quite good for Guy House, I have to say, but I may not agree. So, I've made some um, 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 uh, changes, and those of you Orthodox Buddhists in here, and there's probably a few of you, um, it might seem a little bit, um, what should we call it, um, eccentric. Well, why not? So, try to bear with the day. There is some clear purpose and uh, intention um, uh, behind the illogic of the day. And we'll see that as we, as we go along. Just with regard to the people in the hall uh, here, and uh, firstly, I'm delighted and encouraged that there's a very nice, uh, good response of, uh, 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 of you for all uh, coming. I thought it would be a much smaller group given the, the the jhana, the deep absorption theme, but anyway, it's obviously aroused some curiosity. Um, in the hall here, there are also some uh, people who are on personal retreat, and they are usually down at the far end of the building, who spend some time, days or weeks, or sometimes um, um, months, doing uh, personal retreat, but they also have the okay to um, come and uh, participate in a retreat uh, there. Similarly, with regard to work retreat and, uh, as, as well. There are also, I think, three or four people, if I recall rightly, who are here for a um, slightly shorter period of time, I, mean, I think about one week. The reason that I'm, uh, say, I'm saying all this is that sometimes there will be some in, empty cushions and it's not because they're fleeing from happiness <laughs> though they might, I have to say or can't hack another minute in the hall here it's that, that some are on work retreat, some are on personal retreat and some uh, are not, three or four I think it is, not here for the full uh, nine days but the vast majority of you, um, I uh, hope, will be very much committed 
to the full timetable uh, each and every day and all that I can do as a meditation teacher uh, is to encourage each and every person to hang in, stay, not to flee to Newton Abbott Railway Station for happiness and uh, stay with the flow of things and hopefully, and uh, out of uh, all, all of that, the benefits will not only be in the short term, but to the last breath of one's rather short existence. <coughs> and perhaps, we'll see, out of that will come uh, not only uh, calm and uh, uh, natural joy with life, but also, and equally important, of course, is uh, insight and understanding coming out of it uh, as well. But, as all things in life, no guarantee. Some of the Dharma teachers, Dharma, for those of you who have never even heard the word Dharma, it's spelled D-H-A-R-M-A, and it means teachings and practices to awaken our life. It's a word the Buddhist teachings and practices to awaken our life. So some of the Dharma teachers have been contacting me by the dreaded email or ringing me up from various places and saying, Christopher, I see you're doing this jhana retreat, this absorption retreat. And, um, and I see that you haven't restricted, restricted it to experienced meditators. It's got anybody can come. Anybody. And he, they said to me, do you think any new people could possibly have depth, <coughs> that kind of depth? And I said, why ask before? How could I give or express any kind of view, view and opinion months before the event? So, come the end of the retreat, they'll be contacting me, so... Uh, <laughs> your, your cooperation would be greatly appreciated <laughs> because there's a few disbelievers and doubters around and we'll, we'll see how it flows a lot. But this um, <coughs> meeting of um, calm and insight is a, a very strong uh, and important theme and the Buddha used a rather beautiful, exquisite, actually, analogy to express this. And he said that the body is like a, a castle. And the castle has windows to the outside world. And those windows are eyes, ears, nose, tongue. And through the windows of the castle, we have contact with the world around us. And then he says, two messengers fly through the windows to the lord of the castle. And the lord of the castle, he said, is awareness. And the two messengers arrive, one's called Samatha, which is Karma, and the other messenger is Vipassana, insight. And these two messengers come to the Lord of the castle. What's the message that they bring? And then they said, liberation. Liberation. Oh, there's the castle. There's the castle. Windows, ideas, no tongue. And that two messengers come, calm and insight. They bring a message to the Lord of the castle, awareness, and that message is the message of liberation, the message of the full emancipation and freedom of the human being. So this retreat is going to lean a little more on the calm side. So how would that, <coughs> what would that mean in terms of the uh, day? So, um, some of you, uh, recognize because I know you've been loitering around meditation centers for years now. And uh, others of you are relatively uh, 
uh, new, or very, uh, very new. So, on a usual uh, retreat that I give, there'll be some um, common characteristics of the timetable. One of those, of course, would be the sitting, walking, standing flow. Uh, they're usually around 45 minutes per uh, period. That's all changing for this retreat. Um, there would be the inquiry period, which people rather bravely volun- volunteer. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Um, volunteer to uh, come up to the uh, uh, front for the Inquisition, and uh, that's not on the retreat either. Uh, I usually would meet with the co-teachers, um, people uh, in small groups, and uh, to see how life is and what's going on in the back of beyond. And that's also not on either. So those familiarities uh, uh, dispensed uh, with, and as you will see, I hope to be over the days, uh, be chances, of course, for uh, one to one, etc. Um, and there's a few small um, references or guidelines with regard to the days themselves. And the first small um, um, letting go, except for my poor self and the land of the privilege, is no use of the what in the meditation hall. This I have always felt for far too long has been a great comfort zone for people. And some people spend more moments in a sitting um, watching their what than watching their breath with the usual mantra for the sitting to be over as quickly as possible. So if one doesn't have a watch, ah, and I'm not running on a usual kind of, this is how long the sitting will be, it's going to be a little bit more of the unknown, because some of you hardcore meditators out there are so used to 45 minutes, your program so the program is just finished, <laughs> and therefore the amount of time of the sitting will be up to one person. <laughs> Could be ten minutes, or <laughs> we'll see, to see what kind of mood I'm in on the day. Um, uh, with the days as well. The usual time for the um, evening talk um, has been around 7.30 in the evening. And the actuality is that wherever one goes on this planet in the Buddhist scene, especially the Vipassana Buddhist scene, the evening talk is nearly always around 7.30. Kind of become religious. So this is at 4 o'clock now. (laughs) <laughs> based on the principle that change is as good as the rest and the evening time from 7.30 to 8.30 um, is going to uh, uh, vary and I some one of the uh, trustees um, in discussing of uh, uh, Gaia House and its life and uh, time, but I won't bore you to death with the internal events of Gaia House, um, but um, suggested, oh, I, I think the, the spiritual direction of Gaia House will stay the same, which is, depends what it means by direction, spiritual. But it always seemed, seemed to me that in the um, good old spiritual uh, uh, tradition outside of the father somber we pass in our world, that um, needs to be a bit more opportunity for expression of the heart. Yeah. So, in recent years, this has been mostly done, as many of you know, through the development and the cultivation of uh, metta, of loving kindness uh, practices, because the Vipassana world was considered dry as a desert by a few people. So, the, me- the metta, the loving kindness, helps. And it's worked very well, very well and, and very important. But I've got 
different things in mind. Um, music. So I've been taping some um, um, music, no um, hard rock or punk, so I'm slightly tempted. And um, uh, some movement and down the down, I've got in mind. And I've, um, some poetry and some uh, uh, readings which have uh, uh, joy and happiness uh, in them. So each evening, from 7.30 to uh, uh, 8.30, this will be, it will vary one, one evening, different features uh, of, of the evening. Lead to uh, uh, nourish the good spirit uh, of things, and partly to contribute to keeping the heart uh, warm and, and open, and um, as a uh, an expression and a sense of uh, re- receptivity. And I think there's much which is beautiful in life, obviously, which can be uh, communicated and shared and touched us deeply. And hopefully, in small ways and gestures, the 7.30 to 8.30 period in the evening will help for that. And it's about time Guy House had a bit of music in the place anyway. And uh, so we're going to get the ball rolling. Um, With the day as well, uh, there rather a full uh, day and in, in that the uh, sitting periods and the walking and the standing periods I'll endeavour obviously to give as much uh, practical and clear and specific instruction as possible uh, so to keep you completely uh, up to date and uh, informed as things uh, un- unfold but the times of the uh, giving the general instructions will be basically when I feel like it. So, that will be when it will be. And, uh, so there'll be time together in the hall, there'll be time um, uh, 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 outside, there'll be some variations with um, the instructions for uh, outside, which will uh, include and embrace a bit more uh, consciousness and contact and connection and receptivity with the nature. Because we know the, uh, the old hardcore yogis around this place um, do you know, invaluable concentration, not on the step by step activity and the foot touching the ground, uh, uh, etc., which is really greatly important and invaluable there. But given the theme running through the retreat, that the instructions will vary. Um, so I would ask those of you who are very familiar with meditation and very familiar with the uh, retreats and in fact meditation instructions to abandon them as much as possible so that in the time of uh, being here it will uh, be as much uh, uh, receptivity <laughs> because heart and mind Joy and happiness is a human birthright. It's that important. And when we're not happy, and when we're having a hard time, every signal inside of us is telling and reminding us something's not right. Because we know that what's truly right for women and men on this earth is to feel natural happiness. And in our painfully busy life, and in our obsessive doing, 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 wanting, 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 needing, 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 and all of that outgoingness somehow or other is taking us away from what really deeply matters. So I would like, and I would hope, that my deepest wishes, of course, is with regard to that each and every one of us in the time here gets genuine nourishment, genuine goodwill and happiness, and genuinely have that sense of a, a life fulfilled just by itself, not through having, not through doing, not through owning, not through achieving, not through getting, but it's naturally 
and happiness does not. That is the power. Final couple of minutes. <coughs> There's the um, importance and great value of the uh, ethical uh, 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 guidelines <coughs> and they essentially is a way of being in the world of non-harming and non-exploiting, non-violent so that we have a genuine sense in our life of interconnectedness, uh, concern, warmth, affection, respect for the each other. And the theme of uh, ethical of the ethics of these uh, way of relating in this world matters uh, a, um, a great a great deal. Just at the meeting last night, speaking in uh, the city hall in Potnes, with, with various uh, people expressing, of course, deep concern about events of the Middle East, which all of us would have heard about possible threat now to uh, Iraq, etc, 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 etc. And in all of the uh, facing of these circumstances of life, there's an ethic involved. There's a deep moral concern involved. And we have to find ways and means, other ways and means, than just anger, just retaliating, just throwing out our views into and so it's a tremendous undertaking in life to feel a deep sense of interconnectedness. To find deep contentment and happiness. And to trust that out of that will come an abiding concern and an, and an abiding compassion for others. And so the teachings of the Buddha perhaps more than the other, any other teaching that I have expressed and encourage a real deep commitment to matters of the heart as a way of being in this world and as a way of relating personally and socially and politically and economically and spiritually and existentially and philosophically that what is in our heart really, really matters. So the time and the day is here are going to have that focus. Teaching is going to have that focus. The practices will have that focus. The outdoors will have it. The music will have it. The dance will have it. The poetry will have it. You'll have it through all your senses, I promise you. And hopefully, out of all that goes on, it will land in a good, deep, So, let's have um, five minutes sitting meditation. It's, um, what is it, it's 8.45. I'll just give a minute or two of usual bare instructions at the end of the first evening, and then I'll just speak a little bit about that. So, initially, just setting that the posture itself is uh, reasonably uh, straight and uh, upright. Some expansion in the chest and diaphragm uh, area. One is uh, present to life. Which is for this favorite spectator to be present to it as it is. And just to feel oneself sitting here in the quietitude of the evening. being just present. That's it.
remaining couple of minutes. Thank you for listening. To learn how you can support the teachers and Dharma Seed, please visit dharmaseed.org slash donate.